Boy P here and today's video is finally my system build guide. Um, this video is aimed towards you know like, um, a build guide for dummies or you know, noobs, or beginners, however you want to put it. And I will be explaining things in very simplistic um, terms and um, sh showing in great detail just how you connect things and all that lot. So if you seem a bit patronised in this, it's aimed more towards those people who don't really know all, um, all that well. Um, um, so that's what it's for. I uh, do want to explain why I went for some of the um, options that I've got here in front of me. Um, as it is, it's taken me um, almost a year to save up and buy all these parts and today finally I get to build it. So um, first I'll start with my case. I, wa I wanted a case which looked, f um, looked fairly um, uh, cool sort of looking, you know, um, but was still very good for airflow and for, um, and that and and be able to stick all the stuff I wanted to put in it. So I went with the Aerocool Mechatron Black Edition. Um, I was disappointed a couple of months later when I realised I wasn't going to be able to put a dual um, fourteen centimeter um, fourteen centimeter radiator in the top tower, um, right across here, um, as um, there isn't enough space uh, to fit the radi radiator and the fans. Um, I got some Aerocool um, Shark Air and Red LED fans, fairly high performance fans. Those will be going on the on the sides and across the top. Um, I've got a um, silent master fan to replace the front 20 centimeter fan. Um, I did have to buy some extra screws for it because um, the front doesn't use standard um, fan case screws. Um, they're more like a PSU screw or um, a radiator screw. So I had to buy some longer ones. Um, the main things I wanted to use this system for was uh, gaming, uh, m movie editing and so on um, and be able to do it really quickly. So um, I, because uh, um, at times um, I don't have much free time to myself. So um, I did go for uh, GTX 780 Ti graphics card and it's the Gigahertz edition um, by, um, by Gigabyte. It's one of the fastest um, factory clocked um, cards out there. Um, CPU, I've got 4770K. I didn't get the Devil's Canyon one because I bought bought this one before that one um, came out. And I've got um, the Liptec 120X um, uh, CPU cooler. That would be uh, mounted as a, my rear exhaust. Um, power supplies, um, the Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 10. I've got that one because it's um, an 80 plus um, platinum uh, power supply. So it's really power um, efficient. And it's also got a nearly sil silent operation. Uh, got the um, Gigabyte um, Z87X UD5 TH motherboard, um, primarily because it's got um, built-in Wi-Fi and um, the UD series motherboards are uh, uh, well, um, exactly that, the ultra drawable and um, very well lasting and fairly good overclockers um, according to their reputation. I did get a sound card, um, the Sound Blaster ZXR. Um, I wanted the um, ZXR because it does have the front uh, module thing that says me reach around the back every few minutes to swap out headphones or speakers or something like that. I did want a really high end um, sound card because I was thinking of uh, moving into uh, making music as well. So I thought that would be handy for that. I've got a, um, an LG Blu-ray rewriter. I do have a bit of a Blu-ray collection um, when it comes to movies so I'd like to watch some of those on my um, computer. And um, I um, just wanted to rewrite it because you never know, I might want to um, actually uh, make some Blu rays. Um, I've got 32 gigs here of the Corsair Dominator Platinum um, 2400 megahertz version. I wanted that um, so um, I'm not limited by um, speed um, at all when it comes to certain applications. Some applications can use a faster RAM um, or, um, uh, for uh, better speeds when it comes to certain. Things um, so I wanted a fairly ha fast row, and the Dominator Platinums are very reliable as well. I've got the um, o OCZ Revo Drive 3X2. Um, again, I got that one primarily because um, I wanted really fast storage, something that wasn't going to slow me down the day to day things that I wanted to do. Um, I've got the um, Samsung 1TB Evo Drive. Um, that would be as a backup and uh, putting my games on as well uh, for my um, OCZ. Um, uh, Revo Drive um, 3X2. I did say Samsung Evo, didn't I? Um, they're 4TB four, four Western Digital Black. Um, it's the late, latest um, FZ EX version, um, so it's the um, fastest one. 
again, um, I, I like to make loads of movies, um, well, not movies, but um, like YouTube videos such as the one I'm recording now. Um, so I do need the additional storage. Um, I've got the uh, um, NZXT Aperture M card reader. Um, I wanted that because like I'm using the camera now, I do like to take the card out and just plug it, um, plug it in. Um, so that will come in handy for that. I've got 5.25 sorry, 5, 5 inch drive bay storage box. Um, just a little drawer to put my um, USB sticks in and um, memory, um, spare memory cards and other things like that. Um, got Windows 8.1. Um, not a lot of people don't like that one. I thought it was okay. Um, I thought I'd just get the latest version of Windows. Um, I know um, Windows 10 is coming out at some point uh, next year. And I've got two Dempsey Flex um, fan filters. Um, those go on the side and top and um, help keep the system low maintenance for cleaning. Um, and that just about co um, covers all the parts. Um, the reason why I've got uh, most of them. Now this um, total um, system build um, just for the tower itself has cost me £3,459.05p. And, um, that, um, that's taken me almost a, um, a year to save up for everything here. That is, an ex uh, is a staggeringly high price. Um, in dollars, that's US dollars, that's um, $5,559.65. Um, uh, and that's uh, of current um, currency conversion of October 12, 2014. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty expensive system, but for what I want it to do, this is going to be more than enough uh, for my needs, especially uh, for the moment anyway. Um, I do plan on overclocking the um, processor, but I won't be doing that in this video. Um, as I said, this video is just mostly a tutorial. Um, a lot of the parts are now cheaper, such as the graphics card, that cost me £550. Um, but since then, uh, NVIDIA has discontinued it and it's dropped to about 400, uh, sorry, less than £350 now, so you, you can save £200 in that. Um, all the parts have dropped slightly in price, the um, 4770 k has dropped um, about uh, 50 quid in price. So you could probably build this system for around £3,000, maybe a bit less than that. Um, so that's enough uh, talking about the system, let's actually get into the building of it. Right, first of all we're going to start with the case. I'm going to remove the parts which aren't going to be used, namely the fans inside it. i um, got the one 20 cm fan in the back, and sorry, one 12 cm um, fan in the back and one 20 cm in the front. All you should need for the construction of your computer is Phillips head screwdriver or multi-bit one. Um, I use two because the one with uh, my HyperX uh, screwdriver um, tends to have a smaller head and sometimes you do need one and uh, the Phillips head with a slightly larger one. Um, just go and get this uh, camera put on a tripod and we'll get started. By tripod I mean this little thing, I don't mean something big and expensive so um, it's just so I can put the camera down and record with um, hands free. The back right. So to start this off we need to remove this, um, the side panels. To do this we just remove the, um, the four front screws in the back, two on each side. And try and find somewhere safe to put your um, screws. I've got a little plastic tray there just to put my screws in so I don't lose them. Now to take the sides off, you carefully slide the panels um, backwards to, and then just lift off. Now find somewhere safe to put your panels um, so they don't get damaged. Last thing you want to do is, uh, while you're working on your system, kick it and either break a toe or damage your um, brand new case. So if, it, if, it don't matter, um, if it didn't say it already, a um, good place to put it is uh, in the box for your case. Again, just pull back and lift off. For this one we need to take the front off as well. Um, for most cases there's a little grip in the bottom of the case. Just give it a little um, strong sharp pull and it just comes straight off. Be careful of any cables on the inside. I've already positioned the cable so I wouldn't snatch it off or anything. Again find somewhere safe to put this. 
So now we just undo the four screws on each corner of the fan. Then put them in a little trailer somewhere where you keep them safe. We'll just take them out. It's glass scrap. And again, carefully take the wire out of the case. And that's one removed fan. As I said, I'm not using this internal fan here, so again, just the four screws, remove those. I'll probably uh, speed things up a bit. Um, so things don't get too boring for you to watch. Oops. Try not to drop them and lose them. Like I just did. I didn't lose it, but dropped it. All the preparation done for the, ca uh, for the case it looks a bit better now that all the panels are off. Um, most cases come with all the screws and that which you'll need in one of the drive bays. This one you just flex it open a bit and it pops straight out. Okay, just leave that in there so we don't lose it. Be back in a moment um, with a uh, um, starting work on the motherboard. Won't put the fans in it just yet, um, as we want to probably get the motherboard in first, so um, the fans aren't going to be in the way. So we'll start work on that, and then uh, we'll go from there. Right. So now we have the motherboard out of its box, and that. Um, don't forget to take everything out of the box which you need. As I said, this one comes with built-in wireless, so that's its antenna there. In total, I'm going to need three SATA cables. Um, the motherboard comes with six, so um, two from the hard drives and one from the um, Blu-ray reader. And never forget your uh, rear I.O. shield. Now, uh, if you don't have an anti-static mat or work surface, this is just a wood table or um, desk. And this is where my computer is going to end up being. Um, you um, work on the box which the motherboard comes in. It works as a decent um, insulator. Don't work on the anti-static um, anti bag. Um, contrary to belief, it's not um, electric proof sort of thing. Um, it works almost like um, how an, when an airplane gets struck by lightning, it goes around the skin of it and out through the bottom. If a static shock hits this, it goes round it and out the other side rather than through it and into the device itself. Um, so if you put it, put it on that, and the shock can still go through the motherboard, through that, and then into whatever is on um, it's on top of, so just work on the box and everything should be fine. So first of all, we're going to um, install the CPU and then the RAM and then we're going to um, put the whole lot inside the um, case. So back, back in a moment. So um, here we have my CPU out and ready, um, still in its little um, packaging. Um, we have my uh, four sticks of RAM there. Try and keep the RAM together out of the same boxes as they are tested together by Corsair, so it just gives you that better possible re reliability and um, so on. Now, just zoom you in a little bit. Um, there we are. Um, just push down on this little retention bucket, pull it to the side a little bit, and then lift. Now you can just lift that part. Don't bother taking the little plastic retainer off. Um, actually, before we um, no, we um, just um, continue with this moment. Now, don't know if you can see it, um, but focus. On the corner here, there's a little gold triangle, and it will only fit. Uh, and there's notches on the uh, sorry, there's notches on the sides here as well. Um, so get the gold triangle more than anything else. See it on the front here. It usually goes in the bottom left corner. So you just line that triangle up and make sure it goes in. You give it a slight wiggle just to make sure it's in properly. 
and then we just bring back down the retention bracket, lift the arm, make sure it's in place, and then use my left hand, push down, should be a bit of a pressure this time, and that, then you just tuck it back under there, and that should automatically pop off. Oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to zoom out a little. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Zoom out a little bit. Um, now we're just going to want to clean the um, top of this quickly um, with some um, isopropyl alcohol. Um, I'm using the Arctic Silver cleaning um, cleaner and purifi um, purifier, and um, just to make sure there's no grease or anything um, on it when it comes to put, applying the thermal paste. So I'll be back in a moment um, once we um, gather those parts together. Right. So now I've got my uh, cleaning fluids and some kitchen towel um, is a good one to use or lint free cloth or something. Um, here's what I stick a drop in the centre of the CPU. Oh, come on. There we go. So you should see it spreading out there. Take your cloth and then just gently clean it. get a bit on the uh, retaining bracket don't worry you just wipe it off that as well we get to stage two the bottles um, that I'm using are numbered um, I believe it's just distilled water although I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, it just helps get the rest of the alcohol off uh, and again clean until it's dry Okay, so that jobs are good in. Let's move these to the side quick. Sorry if I keep getting in my own light a bit. Um, I'm kind of limited to my light sources at the moment. So now we want to get our RAM card. Just take them out of the plastic packaging quick. Now first of all, you want to make sure you align this notch with the ones on the motherboard. Make sure that the brackets are open. You see, you just clip open and closed. Line it up. Slide it into place. And then just push down until both sides clip up. As I said, you want to try and keep the um, RAM together um, at the same packet. Um, like um, these two um, sticking in the grey ones, the other two um, out the same pack um, sticking in the black ones. And then just click it into place. There you've got a good view of where they'll click into place. Just start recording slightly later, sorry. And again, just line up and slide them into place. all of them in just make sure that all your clips there are completely slid into place okay, you're on the other side uh, don't know if you see them can't even see me on the screen at the moment there we go. you can see that those are all clipped up into place um, so that's all the ram in good and proper um, now as I said next we'll be uh, installing the motherboard into the actual case itself so I'll be back in a moment once I've uh, moved things out of the way uh, before we actually start, we want to get all these cables out of the way. So you can either leave them outside the case like this, or we're going to do as I'm going to do it, and just push them back out through the hole that's so coming through and out of the case. If I don't get them tangled first, you can just make sure yeah, that all these cables are completely oh, coming out. Okay. Now, the, this, now we've got plenty of space to work with without, work, without worrying about getting cables um, in the way. Now, um, luckily with this motherboard, we don't have to worry about the uh, motherboard side. This case, we don't have to worry about um, installing standoffs um, for the mother, um, for the motherboard I'm using. 
as um, the motherboard I'm using is an ATX one and it comes with uh, you know um, pre-installed standoffs well the case is standoffs really so just get this lay on its back and I'll start putting the motherboard in for you now before I almost forget um, I do need to install the, um, uh, the motherboard um, IO shield Let's take it out of its packet quickly Make sure you align it the correct way. Usually, the best way to do it is where you see all everything's. Sorry, the um, camera's kind of inve inverted at the moment. Um, where you see all everything's lined up against the bottom, not the top. Um, so it'll go around around that way in the bottom of your um, case. Now just push in until they click into place. does usually require a bit of pressure doing this. There we go. Yeah. In all the way. Don't think so. No, it's not even in this corner. There we go. And that's one. Sorry if you couldn't see that properly, but that is one installed IO shield. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to work this uh, next part because uh, I can't seem to find a decent way to um oops sorry decent way to align the camera um so it'll be a few minutes while i'm setting up the camera so you can see me installing the um the motherboard properly all right now that the uh power lead for me the camera isn't trying to pull the camera over um just grab the motherboard quick and start to put it in place It might be a good idea if they take the caps off the uh, connectors as well. I won't be able to put them in here otherwise. Now, as you see, there's a little post here, and that aligns with a hole here on sorry, a hole here on the motherboard. Um, so you just carefully line it up. I just stopped recording now, uh, set because I forgot to get the screws out. As I said before, the um, motherboard does come with a box of um, bits uh, which should c contain all the screws which you'll need for building your system. As I said, I did need to buy some extra screws because uh, the front of the case doesn't use standard um, fan screws. So um, just grab the motherboard screws in the back. Right back. Now, all the um, screws which um, come with the uh, case um, packs are labelled as you. Oops, sorry, camera's inverted still. See, it's uh, 20 um, PSU and um, uh, 3.5 inch HDD um, screws. Um, not, none of the screw packs were lab labelled motherboard, so um, it's these ones do fit, so I'm using these ones. Um, in total, I'll only need eight, um, so that uh, gives me more than plenty for the other things which I'll need them for in a minute. Um, so I'll just grab a few more out. probably speed this part up as you're probably not going to need to uh, um, be uh, watching every screw being put in. Try not to drop screws into the case. If you do, just retrieve them. It is worth mentioning, don't over tighten them or you'll probably damage the um, threading for the for the case or for the screws themselves. Um, you only need to hand tighten, just turn them until the um, screw stops itself. If you keep tightening, that's where, you, where you'll start doing some damage. which I've only just realised uh, for the for the PCI slots here 
they've got a little recess out here, um, I don't know if you can see it, sorry, a little recess out here to help you get in the screws a bit better. A lot more than more manufacturers don't do that. They make you uh, struggle. Now, I, I will say now that uh, air cool cases are good for if you're air cooling a PC. They're not very good when it comes to um, um, liquid cooling because the cases aren't very good for support with radiators. Um, they are very sturdy construction cases, but you just don't have the space in them for radiators. Um, when it comes to test fitting, a um, good way to te test whether or not your case can support with radiators is uh, to get two fans. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in right. Yeah, that's it at an angle. Oh, that's got a slightly funny angle. Um, as long as it's secured, the motherboard doesn't want to shift. Everything's okay. As I was saying, sorry, um, a good way to test whether or not your case does support um, radiators um, is to get two. Um, fans and try and stick them together with your board in the way, um, in, inside but uh, because of this heat sink here I wasn't going to have enough space for a large radiator on the top like I wanted but oh well that's life. Um, stop recording here for a sec and um, the next thing I'll probably do is either the power supply or the um, liquid cooler for the CPU and um, decide what I'll do next in a moment. I knew I'd forget that I uh, need to do something uh, first. Um, I just unclipped them by pushing down on each side here. Um, on the RAM, I forgot to take the little um, protective covers off the um, Corsair logos. Um, so, yeah, I've um, got to take them all out and uh, peel those off first. Um, so, don't, fear, um, don't forget to do that before you put your RAM modules in. So as you can probably guess from the position of the camera, next I've decided to put the um, power supply in. Um, I am doing it face down in the system, that way um, the uh, power supply does get better um, cooler airflow from the outside of the case. There is a fan filter in the bottom of the case there. Um, it's n um, you can only really do it if there is ventilation holes in the bottom, but it just gives the power supply its own better um, airflow. So now we just carefully uh, move the camera back a bit. Um, carefully slide it into place. There is a bit of metal on the top of it here um, to help protect uh, these uh, ports and that. Um, so we just carefully slide it under that piece of metal, like so. Then push it as far back as it will go. It's all the way in. And on the other side. I just got to um, find my PSU screws quick and then I'll just screw that in. And the power supply itself, the Be uh, Quiet Dot Power Pro 10, comes with its, whoops, sorry, um, with its own uh, thumb screws uh, to screw it in. Um, so, which screws you do put, put it in depends on the orientation of your um, power supply. There are a total of was it, six, eight um, places where you can screw it in, but uh, only certain ones will be available depending on which way around you put it in. Oop, get in there properly. You end up over tighten, then it just stops there. Uh, I would advise to use the Be Quiet um, screws. Um, it does come with thumb, um, thumb screws or standard types of screws. because. Um, uh, you do need the extra length slightly because it does have a rubber um, mounting um, to help stop the vibration coming from this, making your system that bit um, noisier. That's another thing which I aimed my system to be is um, uh, a quiet one um, and be quite a uh, power supply. Um, I wanted it to be uh, quieter um, in operation. So that's uh, all. The uh, screw holes are uh, taken up. Um, it comes with five for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. But I suppose it might come in handy if you lose one, strip one, or something like that. Uh, just decide what I'm going to do next from here, and I'll be back in a minute. So this is what it's looking like now. Um, starting to get there a bit. Um, 
next thing I'm probably going to um, I'm going to do is put my SSD in and my hard drive. Um, the additional um, brackets I'm actually going to remove to help um, give that slight better um, airflow coming from the front fan to help keep the system that bit cooler. Although it's not probably going to make that much of a difference. So um, I just grab one of the trays out and show you. Putting uh, it up. Now I've uh, grabbed me two, uh, well, my hard drive and SSD. Let's pull one of the cages out quick. And it is really simple, just make sure you put the uh, connectors on the rear end of the cage. And then when you up closer, you see the holes in, in the side here. These here, just uh, slide it in. And that this side, just pull back a bit until you can flex it over. Been a bit of an annoyance. Uh, there we go, that side's it. And it's in. Now, um, with these, I uh, can't see my camera quite right, sorry. Um, I can put an additional screw in um, to help keep it secure. I'm not going to bother, as um, here we've got um, anti vibration ru rubber grommets here, and I'm just going to leave them to that um, to help uh, cancel out the vibrations from that. If I put the screws in, it um, might um, increase the vibration slightly. So um, just move the case quickly so you can see. Ooh, it's getting a bit heavier. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Okay, I'm putting it in the top one. It just slides in. Bring it down quick. Can't see what I'm, what I'm doing now. Sorry. So it just goes in the top one there, and you just line it up. It slides in, push into place, and clips in. And jobs are good on for that one. So, um, yeah, just basically rinse and repeat again. Again, doing it in the top one. Oh dear. Battery falls out of my camera. Uh, stick you back up there a moment. Again, it's exactly the same deal. Um, no vibrations come from an SSD, so no moving parts. So there's no anti vibration little rubber grommets on this. But you still get the little clip in um, pegs. All right. But again, make sure you mount the connector end to the end without the clips to this end. So it goes in this way around. You've even got a handy little triangle pointing to which side is the connector. So again, it's the same sort of deal, just flex it back until the... It does make it a bit difficult, it's certainly a two-handed job. There we go. And then this side's now in. Just flex, flex again over into the holes and make sure that they're in and that's nice and secure. That's, um, an SSD doesn't need to be that secure. Um, oh, that's how I didn't in, sorry. Now it's in, sorry. Um, an SSD doesn't need to be all that secure. Um, as, as I said, there's no moving parts, so it's not going to get damaged. So. Slide that back into place and clip in. Now I'm going to remove the other hard drive trays and that um, it's just to get them out of the way and then go move on to the next part from there. Now again as you can probably guess from the angle, it's time for my 5.25 inch bay um, installation. Again don't forget to take the little uh, bits of front. This is my uh, little drawer, um, well, it comes with screws as well. Um, I recall uses a toolless um, mounting um, system. So just bring that round a bit more. Um, starting from the bottom to the top, because then um, the cables for the um, uh, 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 user I/O here, you know, the power button and all that lot, um, we're getting in the way of uh, the top one. We help just uh, give, um, give, give me a bit of space. So as I say now, saying that, um, just slide it in until you hear a click. It should be. snapped into place. It will look a bit forward to start with but remember I have taken the front of it off so that's the reason why. But you see that's quite secure. Um, to uh, um, remove it you just pull a little tab here and then pull out. So um, next is my NZX2 card reader. Uh, it's just there, uh, undo the wiring, the, um, the cable, uh, cable tie, sorry, uh, tight, a bit tied up at the moment.
Now this one's got some long cables which come with it, so slide the cables in over the top and try and put them out the side. And again just slide into place. Now just hold that there a moment, bring you down to see from the front. Zoom you out, sorry. Now the same, um, this little metal brackets if it wants to there we go, um, zoom in, uh, focus even, just slide in, push until, I think that's another way, I'm not sure, yeah that's another way, sticks out a bit further than that one does, doesn't seem right, um, sort that out in a moment. Alright, that little drawer doesn't want to seem to stay quite in the right place, so just here behind the little uh, 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 toolless bracket, there are a couple of holes there where you can still screw in for extra, extra security. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple of screws in to make sure it doesn't move anymore um, in or out of place. But as I said, um, with this one, what we need to do is pull that, whoop, pull that back and then slide out. It's that simple. Okay, I just screw those in and um, I'll be right. Hey everyone, um, the um, screws for this were a bit difficult to get in. Um, looks like the um, front of the uh, actual um, storage drawer itself looks like the holes are in slightly the wrong place for it. So um, be careful when you come to back um, find such as that, that one. This one's an ever cool one, so uh, if you've got toolless uh, drive bay and, and uh, clips in from the front, it might not fit exactly where you'd want it. So next I've got my um, Blu-ray um, rewriter and that will go in on the top. There we go, and that's that in place. And I'll show you the installation from just about every angle I can and that's what it looks like on the front. So that's all them in place and next is going to be the CPU cooler. Uh, first I'm going to be installing the back plate. Uh, sorry. This is your back plate for um, Intel and AMD. Um, you stick the post in through this side and uh, it tells you on the front here um, which ones you need to do, uh, put it through for your specific um, uh, motherboard. Um, not with well, your chipset. Um, for the LG, uh, LGA 1150, which is the Haswell processor which I've got, you stick it through the cent central hole there, like so. You just push them through. So you repeat the process in each one through the center one, in, in my case, unless you, you um, use a different processor. Get in there. Yeah. Now uh, they're all in, and now we carefully slide that in through the four holes in the back of the motherboard, like so. And that's your uh, backplate installed um, for your processor. Alright, next um, is the little motherboard standoffs. Um, which goes on those four posts which uh, go through the back of the back plate. Oops, stop this from rolling away. Just hold the back plate in place and then slide each one on. Now, as I said, mine's the um, Enemax Liptec 120X um, CPU cooler. Um, different CPU coolers will have different installations, so um, please consult your manual for how to do so. Um, consult your manual on how to do everything. Um, you'll find uh, um, useful um, information in it. Um, did almost forget as well. Got to install a little L bracket for the PSU. Um, so I'm just going to install that quick as well. And I should change your angle quick. <coughs> Perfect angle. So that comes down here in the front. There's a little rail with screw holes in it. And 
you just hold your PSU in place, stops it from, uh, from sliding forward, even though it is screwed in from the back. So. Everything seems not to roll on me at the moment. No, I'm not going to be able to get that in there, unfortunately. Um, bring me in for a better look. Uh, just kind of quick. Um, with the light, uh, see here, there's a little rail there where this is supposed to drop in a focus. It's supposed to drop in there, but the screw holes are just a little bit off, so I can't actually um, screw it in. It's not going to affect the operation of the system, but oh well. Um, so yeah, but, um, back to the CPU cooler. Alright, so now it's the uh, fan installation. Um, but first, before I install the fans, there is a little switch. Yeah, let you see it there. Um, just here for which setting I want my fans on. Um, it uh, limits the maximum vo um, voltage for the um, fans and voltage um, maximum speed, which would be on the OC setting, which is 2500, performance setting 2000, and the uh, silence um, one is 1300. I'm going to put it on the um, performance because um, it is very loud under the um, OC um, when it's up at maximum power. So, just uh, take the tires off the wires quick. Just line that up on the top here, line the screw holes up, and um, just a case of screwing it in each screw. Okay. Don't tighten them all the way down because it can throw off the al alignment slightly. Um, yeah. uh, for the other screws, I've done that before now and I couldn't get the others in all the way. So you just put them in loose and make sure you can get the rest in. That's the first one on. So let's flip it over. This one will be a bit more awkward. Um, okay. And uh, you do want to think about where you're going to have your cables attached. Didn't think about that until just now, but thankfully that one's going to be okay. So this one put the cable in the same orientation. Um, the side which you see these uh, support arms for the centre part is the side which the air comes out of. So you do want to make sure that you don't want to put them both on that way or they're both pushing air into one another and you're not cooling anything. So uh, mount it this way. Alright, um, as I said I almost forgot. Um, I went to attach the, fan, the last fan directly to the um, CPU coil and of course I wouldn't have been able to stick it in the case. So. Uh, do bear that in mind. So that goes on like that. I just had to quickly remove the um, 
CPU cooler um, quick because I realised I wasn't going to be able to stick my fan in with that in the way because uh, I wanted to use the um, rubber anti-vibration um, screws which come with them. So it would have been a bit difficult to get into this uh, back corner to uh, st um, stick that in. So um, as I said, I removed it. So um, instead of put, um, continuing with the installation of my CPU cooler, I get um, the top fans on and the front one on the front as well. So um, I'll be back in a moment once I've uh, unboxed my fans. As I said before, you do need to um, judge where you want to have the, um, your cables running. Um, in the top at the back here, um, there's a little cutout where you can. Uh, thread your cable through. Another nice feature which I've not noticed till now uh, by Aerocool. Um, so it'll be um, orienting this to that back corner. I thought I'd let you know that now um, as you probably won't see it um, when I'm installing it. Right, so these are the um, little anti-vibration screws. I've um, not installed these before so this will be an interesting um, exercise. So first of all I'm going to Thread that cable in where I said it was going to. It's going to come out the back there. Good thing with these Aerocool um, fans, they have a really big, um, well, really long cable. So just push that through there. So it's all the way down. Can't see what I'm doing. Be back in a minute once I've got that one in. Right. After two consecutive droppings of the camera, I might, and uh, the use of a pair of needle nose pliers um, coming in through the hole at the back here, I, might, I did manage to get it in. The motherboard made it a little bit difficult getting in at it, but it's in now. I've got one at the front here just to help support it. So, again, we'll repeat the process, push it in there, push it in, in all the way through. In. No. No. Oh. And that one's in as well now. So it does wiggle about a bit, but that's supposed to help stop the anti vibration. You can see it wiggle about. So. Uh, just to explain it, if we bring it a bit closer, the metal of the case goes between that first notch and then the um, inside of the uh, fan, the hole uh, um, of the fan actually goes in that second notch here, if you can actually see that. Now that's in. And it is literally a case of rinse and repeat for the next one. See them there sticking through um, straight into the bottom half. Okay. As you can see, I've mounted it as, a, um, as an intake fan. I'm trying to keep a positive air pressure in my case and to help stop, stop dust from settling in it. So, uh, I'll be right back in a minute once I've put the other one in. You don't need to watch me do that. Right, getting that. right, getting that second fan in was almost as difficult as getting the first one in. Um, if I were you, uh, just stick with ordinary screws rather than the anti-vibration ones. It's a far less hassle for you to deal with. Uh, yeah. um, getting the 20 centimeter one in now on the front. Get the end plugs and show it through the hole here for them. The wire through. Uh, if you remember, I did say um, that I had to get different screws for this um, uh, for this um, fan um, here uh, because uh, the ones that come with uh, weren't long enough. So, 
Oh. Right, now get the CPU fan in it and uh, CPU cooler in once again. Just be careful with your water blocks as it could fall into the system and damage it. So. Now comes attaching the water block itself to the CPU. Back in a moment once I sorted out the thermal paste. Alright, now it's time to apply the thermal paste. Back with trusty Arctic Silver 5 there. As you can see, it's almost run out. I um, have used it quite a bit in laptops and other systems. Uh, just come in so you can see it. should be all that you need that. Um, I like to spread it about a bit using the nozzle and um, just helps get, uh, give that a slightly better even coverage. So you just spread it about a little bit. It doesn't need to be spread out completely um, as the pressure from applying the um, water block will do that for you. Um, uh, I will say that um, I did just clean the um, the water um, the water block um, with the uh, cleaning kit, which I did with the CPU earlier. It's just the same process, so I don't think it'd be worthwhile recording it. This is quite tight spacing. Try and see what I'm doing. Them in. Uh, oh, there. Oh. Yeah, there. Oh, come on. Come this way. Now it's time to put the little locking nuts on. This might be very difficult for this back corner here because um, of this, this fan. But let's give it a go. Again. Be back in a moment once I sorted it out. Right, that was uh, considerably difficult. I had to take this fan off so I could get the, um, that screw in. Um, but I also had to take the whole um, the water block off as well and take the back plate off because I hadn't put the posts in the back plate quite right. Um, you need to make sure that they're pushed all the way through the back plate and for them to fit properly. Um, so now it is just a case of getting the last two um, of the end. Uh, nuts in so let's uh, start doing that
have to say that is uh, installed. That's it. Can't get it any further. <sighs> now it's going to be uh, wiring up, so I'm just going to uh, stand the case up, move the camera, and we can start wiring up. All right, now uh, we've got the seat and the water block plugged in. That goes into the CPU optional one here. Um, you can see there's a white plug there and a black plug. The black plug's the CPU optional. I should assume you're going to little bit. Uh, can we see it on there now? Uh, right here. So cables in the way. Um, one thing I like to do to shorten the cables a bit is uh, put a couple of put a nice little loop in it. And it just shortens it down a little bit so it's not quite in the way. Yeah, and that's that one in. Um, so the two fans for, uh, for it need to attach a, um, a Y splitter cable to it. Um, just plugs in like that. Actually, first before I do that, take them off to it. I put the same loop in these. those in, yeah, plug that one in up here, this case is a bit tight for space inside it now, I know what I'll do with that, uh, my, deep, my uh, power supply come with some uh, velcro ties to help with cable management and that's exactly what I'm going to, wow this looks like a real mess now, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with it. Uh, we'll come up to that to that. Uh, give me two seconds. Get a couple of twist ties and use them instead. Just sorry if you didn't see much of that, but just ooh, that's close. Um, that just moves, neatens things up a little bit up there for me. Right, uh, now that's done. Um, I reposition things a bit further away so I can see, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to get the. the power cable from the power supply, stick it in with this one, uh, should have gone through the top, no I'm not going to have space for that, come back through here, and plug into here. Try not to break things while you're doing it. I believe that's in properly. It just plugs in there. Okay. Um, I'll be back in a moment once I've repositioned everything better. Once again, I've had to remove the um, water block because I forgot something else. CPU power. So, plug that in and then put the water block back on. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's good to know all the problems can be worked out fairly easily though. I think they are quite annoying. Right, I can stop recording there and put the um, CPU block um, cooler back on. Right, so now after all that messing, I managed to get the CPU block on and back on. Um, but please make sure you do put your CPU power cable in first. I've got it running across the top there. Uh, through the hole up there which I used to uh, um, sort out the screws for this and the cable now comes down around the back here and it'll come in through one of the holes in the bottom there so <laughs> that was a bit of a headache but yeah um, nice to get it sorted out um, just find a decent place to put the camera and I'll continue yeah, so as I said see if you uh, come back down the back then through the front And uh, not got quite enough length, so we'll have to come back down a slightly different route. Through the rubber hole at the top there, see the lower one. And again, had it come through here, and now we've got space. And now it's plugged in. Let's bring it in for a better look. It now instead of coming through the hole at the top here, I don't know if I'm pointing it in the right direction, now it comes in through here and into the front of the power supply. Now we get a look at the lens uh, into the front of the power supply here. Um, before I do any more with um, power cables, I'll be um, sorting out um, like the SATA and um, case cables, and these ones will put, um, these ones will put through the back as well. Uh, all right, so now I get all these cables, which are from case of the computer uh, for all it's uh, different bits and bobs and I'm going to bring them in through the bottom here. Start with the tiniest of cables. That's a very long one. Make sure that you all can see this as well. Don't know if I'm going to be getting in the way. So. Oh. But here um, is the front panel um, connector, your power reset switches, all that. Sort of good stuff. Um, so they all are very well labelled, you know. That one's your sorry. Um doesn't want to focus on it at the moment, but there you go. That one's your um, D um, HDD LED or your hard drive LED. And just look um, at the labeling labelling on the bottom here, and you can see where it's supposed to go. So if you look at it, it goes on the bottom the bottom left. And if you look at um, where it's at next to it, it says HD, you see plus and a minus, that's where the positive and negative goes. 
best way to um, uh, try and do it is uh, usually the coloured one is the positive, so usually the coloured ones go towards the back of the case. So let's get that one connected up. There we go, that's our first one in. Let it focus. The next one is the reset switch. That's the uh, blue and white one. Again, blue being positive. Um, let's stick it at the back. I'm actually using the camera to see where to plug these in because I can't quite get the angle myself. LED. No, reset switch is next to the um, hard drive light. That's both those in. And get this black and red one. And actually, power switch. Um, just a uh, quick uh, let you know the uh, power res um, so it doesn't m matter which way around they go, um, it, um, uh, it just uh, basically jumps with which um, the button jumps. This one goes directly above the, um, the reset. So, let's get that plugged in. If you get the LEDs the wrong way around, um, it do won't harm the system in any way. I'm not sure if that's in right. Um, uh, if you get the LED ones wrong, you just um, unplug it, swap, turn it around, and then put, uh, pop it back in. Um, it shouldn't harm the system at all. Right, now we've got the power LEDs. Right, just lock again. Uh, yeah, power LED on the far side here. Now, I don't know why a lot of manufacturers do this, but it seems to always be three pin one. So should go in. Oh, come on. A bit of a distance from one another. That one's in. And that one's in. Okay. Sorry if I made everything go blow, don't know how long that happened. Oh, you see the boat, they're all in now. Let's grab this. But yeah, um, you don't fill up every single slot there, you just fill up uh, the ones for what the case has. Now, I pull back through the excess cable. There's a grey one, that one. There, and that just keeps things a bit neater on this side. Okay, so next we're going to go for the USB. Uh, USB 3 for the case. That one comes in through here. Can you see it? Yeah. And I'm going to attach it to this red one up here. Um, which is supposed to be the on-off charge compatible one. Sorry, some cables are a bit rigid. Uh, there is a little plug on one side, well, little uh, notch on one side, so it will only go in one way. Um, that's that. That's in. Yep. And the other USB 3, this one's for the NZ NZXT um, um, card reader, it's got two USB 3 ports on it, that's why I got a um, motherboard with two USB 3 ports because I wanted the extra. Um, the computer has a total of 10 USB 3.0 ports and actually no USB 2.0 ports um, available with the exception of um, the card reader itself running off um, USB 2.0. Um, the come through here again. We've got the HD audio for the um, front. Put that under the the USB 3 there. And the HD audio goes in this side. Ooh, let it focus quick. So 
see where it says F audio or front audio. And that one's labelled HD audio. It doesn't want to focus. Um, there isn't like missing pins on that side, just uh, line it up the right way around and plug it in. I can't really see anything at the moment. Oh, and that's that plugged in. So I uh, keep making it go blurred. There we go. Let's see what else we got. Uh, USB 2.0 uh, for the uh, card reader itself. And uh, then that on that through. So again, it'll only go in one way, so it's kind of hard to get these wrong. Uh, yeah. And the USB is plugged in here. Now I've got my fan cables here. Um, not sure where I can plug these in at the moment. Uh, up here, I've got the um, uh, the rear, the top rear um, uh, fan header. So I'll plug it into this one here. So if you can get in at plugging it in. Sometimes I think you need to be a contortionist to work in these things. Uh, and that is now in. Squeeze that in there. Right, that's that one in. Now next is the uh, front, um, top front uh, fan. Bring that in down here. And I'm going to plug it into system fan 4, which is in the bottom, bring you down. And that's that one in. Now the, uh, it's time for the front. Um, Right, time for the front um, uh, one as well, the front front fan even. This time I didn't bring it through one of the uh, rubber grommets because uh, they start to get full once you um, put, get the power ones running through it. So. I'm just going to stop uh, recording there for a moment and I'm um, going to work out what I'm doing next. Right, next thing I'll be plugging in SATA. Um, the, the, all these are SATA three, um, three ports, which are six gigabit ones. Um, they're all the faster type. Um, and they are all labelled in here. don't know if you can quite see it from there. As to which ones are which. See it there. Uh, the top two is zero and one, then two and three, four and five, and then the grey ones are six and seven. On I think it's a Marvel chip. I'm not sure. So again, you bring the cables through, and then clip them in. You should hear a snap. Oh, there we are. That one's in. And the same again. Oh, 
Sorry if you can't see anything. We're just in there. Um, try to plug this in. in and this next one's going to be a bit of a tricky one It'll come in right next to the main power cable for the motherboard My chair making all those noises. There we go, and that one's in. I only, as I said, I only need the three. Um, put them all to the side for now. And now I have to plug these into the actual devices they go into, which is this side. I'll be back. I don't know if you see it very well from there, but um, it doesn't matter which order you plug these in. Um, you just change the boot, the boot priority. So um, in the um, in the BIOS, um, these ones connect right here. This one's the SSD I'm plugging it into. Again, just clips into place. Uh, I've got a right angled one, I'm going to clip that into the uh, hard drive here. Sorry, the cables are getting in the way. There we go. So it's a small connector on that. Oop, almost dropped the camera. Just connect it to the small one. Come on, focus. Like just like so. And that's it. The larger one next to it is the SATA power. Um, the hard drive has the same as well. Turn back around this side so I can plug into the move things around. Uh, I've got another one to plug in up here um, which is uh, the Blu-ray drive. Uh, where's it gone? There it is. Oh, come on. And that one's in. Yeah, that's all the SATA connectors that I need plugged in. Oh, where did that fall out? The USB 3.0 fell out at some point. I hope not do that again. I think I know what it was. It's because I've been pulling on cables. Well, that is another way. I'll be back in a moment once I sort more stuff out. Right, next comes the SATA power. Um, we've got a sing um, single single SATA power here, um, which is for the um, Blu-ray drive up at the top. Um, I've got a multi-SATA and Molex one. I do need one Molex for the LEDs that are on my case, um, but there's for the, uh, two, the hard drive and the SSD. So if I just uh, quick, um, quickly stop and I'll transfer you around to the other side. Here we have me, um, Western Digital Hard Drive and the other SATA, well, the SATA power plugs in here. Let me just grab that a moment. Uh, send. Yeah, I'm plugging it in the right way now. It's a bit stiff to push in. In. And then I've got um, plug into the SSD up there. And that one's in as well. Okay, so that's the um, 
um, the um, hard drive and SSD plugged in. Come back around the other side and then plug in my uh, train of thought again. Plug in my um, Blu ray drive. Get in first. Pulling the um, SATA data out for a moment so I can see what we're doing. And that doesn't want to come out. Ow! Try not to puncture the system, it's not exactly healthy for it. There we go, that's the power in. And the data in as well. It's fine once again thread through the back. And come back through the bottom. A bit awkward. because I'm going to try to go through a million cables. Right, there we go. That side's in. Now you see here, drives one through five. Um, that's where I'm plugging that one in. Way around to go. Okay. I stick this one in number two, it makes it easier for me to get number one, uh, get the other one in then. Come on. It's quite awkward. There we go, and that one's in. Just thread the other one through the back quick and plug that one in as well. in as well. Oh, it's knocked over the computer. Right. Now it's time to plug in my PCI drives and I'll uh, be right back in a minute. Alright, before I can plug in any PCI drives, I have to remove all these PCI um, slot covers first. I'm going to remove them all just to make the job a bit easier for myself um, when it comes to where I want to put stuff. Again, try not to lose any screws or anything while you're at it. And just pull these back and then they pull out. these tight yeah. finish removing these and then uh, I'll come back 
Right, so now the, my graph, um, now that they're all out, I'm going to plug in my graphics card first into the top PCI one. Bit of a tight squeeze, especially for that USB 3 port on. Yeah. You just screw it. You just screw it in this end where you took the screws out a minute ago. Yeah, that's that one in. It's quite the monstrously large card. Thankfully it fits. Let's make sure that USB is in properly. That's in. Right, just gonna get the next cards. Back in a moment. And I'm back. Next I'll plug in my OCZ Revo drive. Um, this one's going in the 4X slot for its maximum bandwidth, which is this bottom one. It's going to be tight for access uh, for that um, fan header. Uh, after some uh, careful deliberation, um, I've got two options for plugging in my um, Sound Blaster um, ZXR sound cards. Um, you can either plug it into the X1 slot here or the X8 slot. And um, I decided to plug into X8 so I can give my graphics card more space to breathe. Um, as it is a, just an, air, um, no, an open air flow kind. Um, so it needs the extra breathing room. Uh, Without any further ado, in this goes. And then the little daughter board I'm going to put up here. There isn't any physical connectors for it to actually connect to. So, yeah, so that's a chair. The only connector it needs to connect to is the um, actual main board. Um, well, not the board, um, the uh, other part of this um, sound card. Exactly the prettiest looking cable out there, but it does the job, I suppose. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, it's got the two additional slots here. If um, I am planning at some point to um, put a, um, a second uh, um, graphics card in it, that'll go in this place, and then this one will move up one. Everything be, basically be the same. Um, but yeah, that, that just about completes the build, other than uh, the graphics card power. I almost forgot that. But after that, uh, we're just about done. There's a dual 8-pin card, so come on. Just one cable. Got this side side. Is that plugged in that end? Come through here, give me space. Right, 
And then this one's plugging up here for the PCI section. And jobs are going. I'll be back in a moment. Now the last thing to do is to put the panels back on. For the moment, all we're going to put back on is the uh, is the front panel. And um, sorry, just rotate the screen quick. Here's the front panel for it. And so it's this I needed that Molex for it, it just powers the LEDs on the front here. Before I do that, it might be a good idea if I take these out. There are two more fans. Oh, great. Look at that. As I was saying, there are two more fans to add to the system, but that's going to be on the side panel. Uh -huh. uh, some superstitious um, PC builders and that say it's bad luck to uh, close up the sides of the um, case before you actually test it out so why not I could um, I, why not go uh, why go against a look like that and I just even that says oh that's gone heavy <laughs> but yeah it's turned out It's not going to be any accessible drawer on that, unfortunately. I'll leave it there for now, but I might take it out at some point. Yeah, it needs more powerful springs in it. Or I'll just leave it like that. So yeah, I'll set up the rest of my system and that'll be, um, that'll be it. And we'll, yeah, we'll be testing it out together. So that's it for now. Everyone, here we have it all finally set up. All I've got to do now is to actually uh, switch it on and see whether or not it actually works. So first, we turn on the switch on the back of the power supply. Don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Hmm, that's not a good sign. Light's not coming on on the um, power button. It usually comes on. Let's pop it down a sec. Hmm. That does have me somewhat slightly concerned. Oh, I guess I'll stop it. 
Oh, well, we're back. Now you can see that um, power light is on. I'm not entirely sure what it was. Um, just fiddled around with the wires slightly and it uh, came back on. So uh, it's got to plug my um, keyboard and mouse back in quickly before I can actually test it. Sorry, got the cable. There is stuff everywhere in here. No, I don't get that. Huh. All right, the light's back on again. Um, I'm not sure what I've done this time. This time I've added a little um, little jumper thing for this OC thing but um, on the power supply. But other than that, I was just fiddling with the wires trying to get it work again. Um, so now we get to test it. to that you can barely hear it. Two fans on the top of belly going. They are, they are on voltage reduction cables. Um, I did change them from where they were plugged to ones under here um, because they're harder to get to. Optimize uh, defaults and uh, mouse. Oh, that would help. I forgot to take the sticker off the bottom of my mouse. Uh, uh, load optimize defaults and reboot. There we go. Start again. This is the initialization screen for the you know, OCZ um, reverb drive. But here, it's just about inside my system, um, just inside the case. And it's so quiet. I'm really impressed with that. Sex boot drive. restart. Before we start I'm going to um, plug the uh, keyboard in again. And now we start. Press F2 to get into the BIOS. Oh. 
back into my BIOS. Press yes when properly displayed, otherwise it will be restored in nine seconds. There we go. Let's get the chair quick. That is one huge display. But you can see everything's working fine there. And CPU is currently at uh, 3.69 gigahertz. Which is a bit strange because it's 3.9 gigahertz CPU. Uh, everything seems to work in fine. See me uh, system temps up here and voltages, fan speeds, 24 degrees CPU temperature, system temperature 29 degrees. So everything's looking pretty good. Is a 3.5 gigahertz. It's um, got a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz, but a turbo of 3.9. So, um, but there it's showing CPU core ratio of 3.7, which is a bit unusual. defaults yes I am running the latest version of the BIOS on here um, F5D um, I updated it myself um, during the times while I was uh, oops, um, play, playing with the parts when I had parts so, let's load and save and exit Right, in summary to end the uh, tutorial on building the PC, um, I built it on Sunday, it's now Thursday, um, sorry Friday even, um, not had any real issues with it, um, see all the lights there, um, I hope you found this video somewhat useful. Sorry that last part was a little bit on the long side. Um, but it's been performing extremely well, better than I originally anticipated. You can see I'm actually working on the video at the moment on Movie Maker. Um, many times faster than the old laptop I was using. It would take hours for me just to, um, just for it to prepare the videos and it takes minutes to do it on this thing. So. Um, yeah, um, that just about finishes up this video for you. Um, hope you found this video useful. Um, please leave a like in the, um, below and uh, comments in the comment section. Uh, there'll be a pr um, pricings for parts um, in the description and other useful links. Um, as I said, I've no real issues so far. Um, that restart, I uh, did have a slight restart problem, which I've managed to fix by clearing the CMOS. Um, but yeah, it's uh, fulfilled all the goals which I wanted it to do. It's it's near silent, it's um, a real fast performer. I've not really had time to test it in game, but uh, the value benchmarks and that do seem pretty good, even though it's a uh, 1440p screen on it. Um, so yeah, um, this uh, wraps up this video. Um, this is Joe Boy Peace, I don't know.